morning everybody, thank you for joining us this morning on Brinzion Online. If you're on social media, if you're on Facebook, just keep uh, joining in, send in a little message, we love hearing from you. Uh, let us know, give us an amen, whatever it might be, join in. Today we've got some amazing stuff happening, we've got worship from Naz, Keris and Talia. We've got a community update coming from Alice, she'll be sharing how things are going with the works we're doing in the community. And, uh, and later on then, Ian will be sharing from God's word with us this morning. Thank you again for so much for joining with us. We just pray that you'll be blessed. We pray that God will speak to you. And um, before we start this service, let me just start uh, with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time together. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for the week you've brought us through. Lord, thank you for this moment. And as we gather today and we sit around our TVs, our pads our phones watching this service we just pray that you, through your holy spirit you would speak to our hearts lord that we would get to know you more that we would be blessed lord but we'd also be a blessing to you lord transform us now this morning as we go into this time of sharing together we ask all this in jesus name amen
Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to church this morning. We hope you're enjoying. We just wanted to give you a little community update video and let you know what's going on in the community. So we are still continuing to do some shopping for people who are still shielding or unable to get out and about. Um, and over the next couple of weeks, we're gonna be putting together some family packs. So keep an eye out. Um, we'll be publicizing that on our social media. So just keep an eye out over the next couple of weeks. But we've also, during the lockdown period, put together some boxes of kindness for local care homes and Caitlin and a team of young people coordinated that. So we just want to know a little bit more about that today. So Caitlin, tell us a bit more about why the care homes. Yeah, so um, Corona really hit the care homes really badly and obviously it had a massive impact on them because during lockdown, family and friends weren't allowed any contact with their relatives at all that, who were in the care homes. Yeah. So um, some niceties that their family members would have brought in obviously couldn't get into the care homes. And obviously a lot, a lot of the nurses were spending all their time there, so obviously couldn't go out shopping for, for those niceties for the, the residents of the care homes. So then a group of us came together, a group of volunteers of young people from the church came together and we put together some boxes full of different stuff like some soaps and some activity packs just to deliver to the care homes just as something nice for them to do oh. and um yeah it was really well received like all the care homes were very very that's thankful amazing. for them yeah yeah i was gonna ask that did, did we get much feedback or anything from the care homes were people surprised to have boxes of kindness delivered yeah so we put in each care box we put in um a little piece of paper just with a little ret a letter box of kindness on them and it actually had the church's contact information yeah so um we had a few responses from the different care homes just saying how thankful they were for it and how it was totally unexpected and just how it really was a box of kindness and they were just really really thankful for for that act of kindness towards them that's amazing and we are so grateful to all of our wonderful volunteers during this time but especially to Caitlin and our young people who did that. 
So like I said, keep an eye out because we've done our kindness boxes for the care home, but we're also going to be doing some bags of kindness and they're going to be going out to local families in the community. So we've got another wonderful team of young people who will be putting that together. But if you need, if you still need shopping, if you need a prescription collecting or anything else you think that our team might be able to help you with, please get in touch with us either via Facebook or via the church telephone number. Thank you. When the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come Longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart i'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing i've made it and it's all about you it's all about you jesus Good morning, it is great to have you all with us this morning and it's a real privilege to be able to open up the Bible and for us to hear God's voice together speak to us. So last week Jav spoke on the words of Jesus in John chapter 8 where Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And now this week and also next week we're going to explore just what the light of the world does. So let's read together John chapter 9 verses 1 through to 7. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, it was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. 
Having said these things, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Let me ask you a question this morning. I wonder what the most pitiful sight is it, it, it is you have ever seen. This man was truly a pitiful sight. He was helpless. Life had dealt him a really cruel hand. There was no social security, no government help, and he was completely unable in that culture at that time to earn a living. And to be fair, the Old Testament law commanded people to care for the blind. But all this man could therefore do was, was beg and hope that someone would give him a break. Hope to scrape together enough from his begging to eat. He was a man robbed of his dignity, a man on life's rubbish heap. But then Jesus came passing by. <laughs> Can I say, if you feel that life has dealt to you a cruel hand, I want to tell you that Jesus is close. In fact, he's passing by. He is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. So what happened when Jesus passed by? Well, his disciples immediately asked the question. Now, perhaps a suitable question may have been, Lord, how can we help him? <laughs> but instead they ask, who sinned? You see, there was a school of thought that if something really bad had happened to somebody, then they must have sinned. They must have done something really bad. And sadly, that, that school of thought still even exists today. And people who are already feeling um, that they're suffering and beat up on life uh, uh, have enough to deal with are left to feel that they're at fault or don't somehow have enough faith. But you know, in this text this morning, Jesus completely rejects that school of thought. He says no one is at fault. Nobody has sinned. But... This is so that the works of God might be displayed in him. You see, they wanted to talk about the man's past. Who's to blame? But Jesus wanted to talk about the man's future. Do you know, people are so quick to ask who's to blame. In our blame culture today, there's always some lawsuit going on. And the disciples say, who's to blame for this tragedy? But Jesus says, the works of God are going to turn this trial into a triumph. So he said to his disciples, we must work the works of him who sent me. Hear that word sent. We're going to come back to that in a moment. These works of the one who sent me are the works of God the Father. We must work the works of the one who sent me while it is day, for night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. The night he talks about there is probably referring to the, the time of his crucifixion. But the main point he's making is simply this. The time isn't tomorrow to work the works of God. The time is today. Jesus talks about this man's future and it begins as he and his disciples do the work of God right there and right then. Can I say this morning, don't ever be so preoccupied with the future that you miss what God wants to do through you today. Don't ever be so consumed with hope for tomorrow that you miss today's miracle. Don't put off tomorrow what God has called you to do today. So work the works of the Father today. So Jesus said the works of God are going to be displayed in this man's life um, 
So what was God's work? It was to open up his eyes. And there's a message that we're going to explore both this morning and also next week as we work our way through John chapter 9, that God's work is actually to do the same in all of our lives, to open up our eyes, not so much physically, but spiritually to see who Christ is. So let's just unpack the work that Jesus does in this man's life in our text this morning. Firstly, it starts with dirt. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I thought Jesus said the works of God were going to be displayed. It doesn't look like it, does it? <laughs> Mud smeared across the man's eyes made up of dirt and saliva, spit. Verse 6 says, then Jesus spat on the ground and mixed dirt uh, with his spittle to form a, a clay-like paste and applied it, it even says anointed it, to the blind man's eyes. Imagine being anointed with mud. The glory of God was at work and it started with mud. Don't think that because things are messy that God isn't working. He even works his glory through mud. But it's got to be said, this is a really strange thing to do, isn't it? And do you, know, do you know, Jesus actually could have just spoken the words. He could have just said, eyes work and the job would have been done. We see that in another of Jesus's miracles when, when he was told to speak the word, uh, my servant will be healed. So, so why didn't he just speak the words? Why did he do this? Why did he uh, put mud and spittle all over this poor man's eyes? Well, maybe it's because Jesus never seems to heal the same way twice because he doesn't want people to think there's some kind of formula and depend on formulas instead of the power of God. Or maybe it's because he knows what each individual needs. And perhaps for this blind man, he needed that. But in this case, um, maybe there's also something else going on. During the book of Genesis, way back at the beginning, chapter 2 and verse 7, it tells us that God formed the first human being out of the dust of the ground. Yep, Genesis chapter 2 tells us that glory came from mud. <laughs> so this speaks very much of God's creative power, the creative power through Christ. And, and, and to be fair, this story that we're looking at isn't so much a healing it's a creating work because the man was blind from birth he never had working eyes and now he was going to receive what he never had before this is a work of creation do you know can I say Jesus doesn't just want to move in and improve our lives he wants to give us what we never had before to make us right um, with God in God's sight and to receive the Holy Spirit of new life within us to be regenerated and from within and um, from above when the work within. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17 says this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. The works of God are the works of new creation. And the dirt in this story, the mud, speaks to us of creation, new creation in our lives. Secondly, he um, told the man to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. Uh, the pool of Siloam was a pool in ancient Jerusalem that received waters channeled to it from the Gihon um, Spring. Um, uh, and now in this text this morning, we're even told what Siloam meant. It meant the word sent. So let me just put it like this this morning. And because there's something else going on here. It was when the man went to the place called sent, to the waters that were sent, that he received what he never had before. He was lost in darkness, but he came to light and new life at the place called Sent. 
Now, there is no wasted word in the Bible. It's all breathed out by God. And in this very passage that we've read this morning, we read that Jesus is the one who was sent. Verse four, sent from the father, sent by the father. If the dirt that we see at the beginning represents a new creation, the creation, the new creation that God brings into our life, then this um, waters, the sent waters speak to us of our turning to Christ, the one who is sent, Jesus. So get back to the one God has sent. He is where total recovery is found. He is where true salvation is found. You can stop searching and striving. It's being clearly sent already. The sent one has come. In fact, he's passing by right now. The life he has for you is actually a pressing forwards, like that blind man on the journey, to the place, to the person who is sent to know Jesus. It may be messy. This man had mud and saliva running down his face, feeling his way forward, not really being able to see, possibly being questioned by those around about him. But he had his heart set on the one who was sent from the father to save him. That's the Christian walk. It's not always tidy. Tidy people look away now. Um, life isn't always tidy. But Jesus works miracles through mess when we press onwards to know the one who is sent from the Father, Christ Jesus. So don't stop. Don't give in. In 1952, the long distance swimmer Florence Chadwick set out to swim the 26 miles from Catalina Island to the coast of California near Los Angeles. During the swim, a dense fog um, surrounded her and her support boat. Despite the encouragement from the boat to continue, she became so disheartened with not being able to see ahead, not being able to see the shore, and she gave up. When she got into the boat, she discovered she had only been less than a mile from the Californian shore. So a few months later, she tried again, and the same conditions hindered her another dense fog but this time she continued and made it to the Californian shore. When a reporter asked her afterwards why unlike the first attempt she kept going she didn't give up she responded like this she said this time I had the shore in my heart. Friends like the blind man on his walk to the pool, we may not always see clearly now, but make the sent one, Jesus Christ, the vision of our hearts. And let's keep walking despite the obstacles. Let's keep going despite the darkness. Let's keep continuing despite doubters because change is coming. So the dirt speaks of the new creation through the place called Scent, which speaks of Christ. And finally, the man washed in the place that was called Scent in the Pool of Silo. And that surely speaks to us of being cleansed by Christ, the Scent One. When we turn and trust in Christ to cleanse us from our sin and make us God's own children, we become a whole new creation. 1 John 1, nine says that when we confess our sins, he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14 says that the blood of Christ, that means his life poured out for us on the cross, even cleanses our consciences so that we can stand guilt free before God and it brings us to serve the living God. We receive what we never had before, just like this man in the story. We were lost, but now found. We were blind, but now see. 
And do you know what I find most inspiring about this story? The man couldn't see Jesus physically and neither can we. But though he couldn't see him, Jesus was close by and spoke to him. And all this man had was a voice. I don't know how many of you who've ever seen the TV show The Voice. Um, a panel of stars sit with their backs turned, um, just listening to a singer. And if they like what they hear, they can press a button and their chair will turn around. And then they don't just hear the singer. They also see the person singing too. What was it that made the man in our story this morning turn? What was it that made him go off on that journey and feel his way forward through the messiness to the sent one? What was it? It was simply that he heard the voice, the voice of Jesus Christ, the sent one from the Father. There is something about the way that Jesus speaks. He has a way of pinpointing his word directly into our lives. He speaks to us today through the Bible. And some of you, even this morning, are hearing his voice today. And if you do, turn and trust in him to cleanse you and save you. And then you'll see. Next week, we'll continue this story and see how it was more than a physical miracle that the man's eyes were truly opened, enlightened by the light of the world to just who Jesus is. But right now, let me ask you, if you hear his voice, have you repented of your sin? That means to turn from them and seek God's forgiveness and trusted in Christ to save you. Have you turned to Jesus? If not, turn to him today and ask him to forgive your sin and trust in him to make you right with God, the sent one. Or maybe you have, and this message is speaking to you about something else. Maybe a situation that's perplexing and unclear. The answer, my friends, is in Jesus, the sent one. Though you may not see it all, Keep pressing in to know Jesus with the sound of his voice ringing in your ears and a vision of him in your heart. Don't let the darkness prevent you. Don't let the doubters sway you. Don't let the dirt pull you down. Keep going for Jesus. He makes all things new.
watching today's service and um, we just want to thank you Pastor Ian for sharing that amazing word with us today. I know yeah. that it's blessed us and I know it will have blessed so many others. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you would like to know more about Jesus or anything else that has been mentioned in today's service or over the last few weeks, then please get in contact with us through one of our forms of social media or via the church telephone number. We would love to talk with you more about what it is to trust in the word of the Lord. Yeah, let's just close this service in prayer. Father God, thank you for uh, the words that we heard this morning through Pastor Ian. Father God, we believe and we know and we trust in you this morning, knowing that you are the God, the same God who opened those blind eyes and you are the same God who performs miracles today yeah. um, in our lives. Father God, we just pray for everybody who is tuned into this live stream uh, this morning. We pray just a blessing over their homes, over their lives. Um, and Father God, we just pray all of this in your wonderful name, knowing that you will protect us over this next coming week. Uh, we just pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.